Welcome to the Hyperfast Wealth Show. On this episode, we're going to talk about a problem that a lot of salespeople, entrepreneurs have, and that is something, it's a problem that you have after you get a little bit of success, and then you stall out. Well, if you have that issue, challenge, problem, this is the episode to watch. Stand by. Sunil, today we're going to talk about scaling. Mm -hmm. All right, so a lot of business people get to a certain level of success. You know, I call it the point where they max out what they can do by themselves or with a little bit of help, and then they kind of plateau. Mm -hmm. They get stuck. You see this with real estate agents. You see it with flippers. You see it with wholesalers. You, you know, you see it in all businesses, not just all real it. estate. Yeah, and you know, there's just only so much one person or, or a small team can do, right? At some point, you got to scale. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what has that been like, you know, for you as, as, as a builder? Like, what, you know, how many, how many deals can you have going on at once? Uh, what do you do when you, you hit that limit or you recognize you're going to hit that limit soon? Uh, walk us through some of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a great topic. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, the, um, how do you call it? The, the, the downfall of success, right? So you've been successful. Now you want to grow, keep growing. And some people can get that. You know, a lot of people can't even do the initial success, but then a lot of people can do the initial success, but then they kind of hit, hit the ceiling, what they can do. I've actually started about six companies in my career, um, most of them real estate related, but I've actually, believe it or not, been involved with the restaurant business and the dental business as well. My ex-wife was a dentist. And you see the exact same thing, you know, successful restaurant guy. He has one restaurant successful, tries to open the second and third location. All of a sudden, everything goes to hell. And even the first one gets, you know, where it shuts down. Uh, very, very similar in the dental business. You know, dentists, they, they know nothing about business. So they kind of somehow get a first dental practice going very successfully or even moderately successfully. They're like, oh, hey, let me go open another one. Now, they don't know how to manage. You got a team over there working. You got a team over here working. They don't know how to manage all those kind of things. So. It's, it's definitely a big problem in any industry you look at, uh, especially in the small business world. Um, so for me, I think, you know, there's a couple of, you know, points I think that have, like I've learned over the years the hard way. Uh, number one is I think anticipate the need that you're going to have. So one of the problems people get into is, um, you know, for example, HR. I mean, that was one of the things we had when we were scaling our dental practices. We opened the first, we opened the, the second, we were going to open the third. And now you almost need one person who just manages HR because you're, you're constantly looking for more people. You know, some people are quitting, moving, things like that. Uh, at one dental practice, you got a small team of maybe five people. It's not that big of a deal. When you get to like three, you're at almost 20 to 30 people. Uh, so I think just as an example of anticipating that need. So don't hire when you need them right away or don't certainly don't hire well past when you need them. Kind of think, you know, three, four, six months from now, I'm going to need this person Let's start looking down, maybe even bring them on a little bit of ahead of that need so the operation doesn't go under that stress of, oh my God, we need this extra person. And there's three, four months of stress. People might quit, you know, things get, you know, law, whatever, uh, things get forgotten and the business kind of doesn't operate at, at, at maximum or optimal capacity. So I think that's one of the big things I've, I've learned is like kind of anticipate that, know it's coming, know your growth is coming and kind of scale up and hire and be ready for that growth. And you, you want to do it before you hit that point, right? Because if, if you wait too long, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're you're super busy, like like maxed out, right? And you need someone desperately. Mm -hmm. So usually, two things happen when you do that. One, you you lower your standards, right? Because you, you need someone so bad that you all. You'll, you'll take just about anyone at that point, right? You need to lock the door, exactly. And then uh, the second thing that happens is you bring this person on, potentially less qualified than he or she should be, and now you don't have time to train them. Mm -hmm. 
because because even if they're good you know they still got to like learn your systems your ways and and you know there's got to be some like feedback there back and forth on um you know between them learning versus bringing you know their own experiences uh so all that's valuable but if you don't have time to do that mm -hmm. you know you're only hurting yourself and that person and it's especially problematic though if that first thing occurred that first event that i brought up where you hired someone that was less qualified than they should be right if you do that plus don't train them right but... you're, you're in for a world of hurt and i've seen real estate agents do this like they wait too long make a bad hire they don't train them fire them they, or, or the person quits and now they're like well that doesn't work you know <laughs> um so so i've seen that a lot so i know like you know last year uh we were anticipating from the management side hitting hitting our max right number of projects so we, we hired a project manager mm -hmm. we're adding more projects right so we we planned in january in february you know two months ago three months ago we, we planned on okay we're gonna have someone in place by you know april or may mm -hmm. and you know we didn't wait to, uh, you know we, we gave some lead time to make sure we could vet qualified people so i think you know it, it's really important that you you do these things before you get to the point of being busy or overwhelmed or you know whatever um yeah, absolutely. It's just anticipating the need. I mean, that's just, you know, one example of one, one issue with scaling. Uh, on the development side, I mean, typically our business is broken down into um, kind of the office folks who handle the scheduling and the permitting and all the office type of tasks. And then, um, you know, the field people who are out in the field, making sure the contractors are getting done, meeting inspectors, you know, doing all the field stuff. So, you know, typically that's what you need. So you'll need, you know, to, to start, uh, you know, when I first started, I was everybody, right? I was doing office stuff, the thing, the field, everything, the finance, everything. Uh, but then as you grow, you want to start adding people to each side of it. So you might want to start with one office person, for example, and that'll help, you know, take off that load from you. And then you want to add a, a, a field person. And then as you grow, maybe two office people. So it's that kind of a thing is how, you know, I think about scaling and uh, certainly from the HR standpoint. I know you're, you're more on the agent and sales side. It's probably maybe a little bit different world there or how you grow. But I know for us, it's relatively simple. You got these kind of two sides. You need to keep kind of keep adding people depending on the number of projects you have. Well, I, I think it's, it, yeah, the, the, the agent sales side is is different, but a, like I, there's a lot of similarities between all businesses. I think you know it, it, it starts off you're you're a solo entrepreneur, right? Then you get enough business for yourself, bring on some assistance all right now you can do more business now eventually you're going to have to bring on more sales people or more uh you know, technicians managers people that can produce the product or service you're selling and you know eventually you've got to bring on management type people to manage this all all like like the hr people you mentioned right you, you, at some point you'll have to bring on people to hire for you um you know, to, in, and you, you just keep building out, right? So it, it's, it, it gets more challenging. It's, it's a different set of problems each time, but it's, you know, I think it's something that's fun and it's, it's really the only way that, that you can scale, right? To get not only just more and more money, uh, more business, but more time as well. Because like, if you, if you were trying to do everything yourself and still grow, you know, you're not gonna have a life. You like maybe you'll make a lot of money, but yeah, at some point you're, you're yeah, you're gonna be burnt out, and you're not gonna be making money because yeah. the whole thing's gonna crash. But yeah, it's it's the concept of you know kind of working on your business versus in your business, right? So again, my example is a developer. You know, when I first started, I was pretty much every day I would visit every job site, right? Because I was I, there was nobody else, and I had to make sure the contractors were there doing their job, you know, et cetera, meeting the inspectors, all the stuff that we do. Uh, but then I've gotten to a point, um, you know, with I remember with my home building business that there was a number of homes that I built that I never stepped foot in. I like just, you know, I knew I knew the process. I was working with my project manager. We would have weekly, weekly meetings. He would make sure, you know, I would make sure everything was happening. But that just freed me up so much to work on my business. Then I can 
you know, find more investors, find more deals, do all that stuff that will help grow my business. Because visiting a job site, and making sure a house gets done, that makes sure that project gets done, but it's not, I'm not growing my business in any way. Uh, so I think that's, you know, one of the key, um, key, key, key concepts is that, you know, I, I, I believe throughout my career, even my life is, you know, outsource anything that you can outsource and, and let other people do that stuff. Uh, because, um, you know, you can like, you know, cleaning your house, mowing your lawn, things like that. If you can get someone to do that at a much cheaper rate than you're worth, then that frees you up to have the time to go make more money and, and build your business. Um, but if you're, you know, out there, you know, taking care of your house and mowing your lawn and doing all those things that you can pay someone 10 bucks an hour to do, um, wh why would you do that when you can take that time and put it into growing a business that can make you millions of dollars down the road? Well, I think, you know, there's, there's a similar, similar, uh, similar <laughs> parallel here with real estate, right? Like a lot of times the reason a deal works out, you know, you, you, you buy a property, uh, you do something with it. There's a lot of value in there. Well, a lot of that stems from that property is currently not in its highest and best use. Correct. Like on your, on your best deals, you're buying something that is a rental that could be a luxury condo, mm -hmm. a commercial building that could, you know, have a lot more density through multifamily. Mm -hmm. So, you know, someone else is using it in a way that's not maximizing the, the worth right so you're you, you know a lot of times in development you make your dollars by taking something from one use getting it to another that in the industry is called its highest and best use mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't don't realize you know it's no different with your own time mm -hmm. and that's what hiring does they, it allows you to continually focus on higher and better use of your times activities that will you know, make you more money uh, and maybe take a lot less time to do. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. Exactly. That's, that's a real estate concept of highest, best use, but you, you apply it to yourself. What, what is your highest and best use, right? And as a CEO of a company, you know, you're really, really what you're doing is you're, you're finding opportunities. Uh, you know, like we're looking at new opportunities in Florida right now to, to grow and expand and then we're putting teams together, right? That's really what we do is we find these opportunities and we put teams together that can execute on these opportunities. Again, when you first start, you might be that team executing, then you kind of learn it, you kind of know, okay, this is how this works. And then you start putting those pieces together and then you can very easily over, oversee someone because you know what they're supposed to be doing. And you know, when, when they're doing it, you know it, when they're not, you know it. Uh, so yeah, as a, as, a, as a highest and best use as a CEO, that's really what you're doing is finding new opportunities, putting teams together that can kind of help you, you know, take advantage of those opportunities and just continuously growing from there. And I know sometimes you're so entrenched in your work and, you know, managing the deal or whatever it is that, that you don't even want to take time to recruit, mm -hmm. hire and train someone. But you gotta, you gotta look at that as, you know, this, this is an investment, right? It's going to take me time to recruit, hire and train. It might cause me to even, be less productive over the next two or three months because I have to take time away from things I'm doing to do this. Uh, but that's a very short-term vision. So if, if you look out a year from now, if you, if you invested the two or three months to recruit, hire, and train and, and get the right person on board, uh, how much you know, more business would you get? Because now you've got time to go look for more deals or how much money would you save because you know that person is going to have more time to catch a mistake, right? So it's it's an investment that sometimes uh, and more often than not probably doesn't pay off in in the very near term, but very quickly after that. And you know, especially if you look in the long term, having the right people, the right team in place makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And another, you know, that actually brought to mind another problem. I see a lot of small business entrepreneurs. Again, this is not just real estate, but I, I've seen it so many times is that they're, I guess they're, I don't know if control freak is the right word, but they're so used to kind of being in charge of it, they can't let go. Hey, hold that thought. Do you wanna get 100 tips for free from my best selling real estate book, The Hyper Local, Hyper Fast Real Estate Agent? If you do, go to hyperfasttips.com and you can download 100 of my best tips today. Again, that's 
hyperfasttips.com. You can download 100 tips on how to grow your business, get more clients, deliver more value to more people. Go to hyperfasttips.com. And what you got to understand is that, um, you know, first of all, no one's going to do as good as you, right? Because it's your business, it's your baby, you're going to take care of it. I know when I, when I manage a project, they always get done better and quicker than anybody else. Because again, that's my baby. It's my money. Every day I'm like, okay, the quicker I get this done, the quicker I get paid. So I'm, I'm very, very invested. You know, if we have a project manager, while they're very, very good, you know, they're not, you know, up on, on a Sunday morning thinking about how to get their project done quicker. Um, so you got to understand they're not, they're going to be, you know, at like maybe 90% as good as, you, good as you when they start, maybe 50%, but as they get into the role. So you're going to, you know, let's say a project takes 10 months to get done with a project manager in place. It might take 11 months. So I'm going to have another month delay, but the, the bottom line is that I can hire infinite number of project managers and do, do infinite number of projects versus with me, um, even though I'm 10% better than that person, I can only do maybe five to eight projects. I said, I'm maxed out at that point. Um, so I think that's a big problem that people, you know, they are afraid to give stuff to other people because they, they know that person's not going to do it as good as them. And likely that person's going to mess it up a few times when they first start. Uh, but that's just part of, of growing a business is that you've got to understand that, that the efficiency is not going to be at a hundred percent at every person you hire, but even as long as they're at 90% and doing it at 90%, that just allows you to build and build and build, uh, versus being stuck at that, you know, at that thing. I've seen it in the medical field, the doctors, you know, that hey, I'm a doctor and I've seen it, they, they just can't let go. And it's like, man, that's killing you. Uh, so I think that's another important point is as you scale is understand that that's just the way it goes. I agree. Well, any last thoughts, Sunil, before we wrap up here? Uh, yeah, just, I mean, one other thing I just want to throw in there is scaling. Uh, I think this whole HR and building teams is probably the biggest issue. Uh, just finance and money, we can talk about that maybe in another episode because it's a, it's a big uh, topic, but that's another area I see people fail and not be able to grow because they don't know how to manage their capital. As you're growing, you're going to need a lot of capital. And, um, you know, a lot of people kind of um, don't anticipate that, then the whole thing just falls apart uh, versus they could have just gotten through that part, they would have made all this money. So, uh, just another thing to keep in mind, we can maybe talk about it more in another episode, but that's um, another area I think that's very important when you're scaling a business. All right. Well, we will definitely hit that up on our next episode, how to plan on the capital and finance side for growing and scaling your business. Uh, meanwhile, if you're struggling, if you feel like you've hit the plateau, you know, Check your team. Who do you need to recruit, hire, and train so that you can get to the next level? Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Sunil. This was a blast. Thank you, everyone who listened and watched. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share this with someone that could benefit, and we will see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests and improve our show. So give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you want to see more, click right here. And if you want 100 real estate tips from my best-selling book, click right here to download them instantly. And if you're new to this channel, click below to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out. And leave some comments about what you think on the videos.